Good morning everyone, it is Tuesday the 5th of May and we are in Mark chapter 9 verse 1 to 10, the transfiguration. And in the build up to this passage, Jesus has been teaching the disciples about who he really is. Not the preconceived um, ideas that the Jews had about the Messiah, but his real identity. We've just had Peter's revelation, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And of course, he is now going to experience that more than just head knowledge, but visceral experience of the true nature of Jesus. Jesus has just been teaching them about how um, the son of man must suffer and die and rise on the third day. Uh, and now they experience it. Peter, James and John uh, go up the mountain and they see for themselves what their ears have heard. And, and I always say of scripture that it is first and foremost a revelation of who Jesus is. That is the far more powerful way of reading it than any other way because it's a transformative way of reading scripture. It, it impacts our lives. But the Christian faith is more than just knowing about who Jesus is. It is experiencing him. And, and this story would have been incredibly important for those first believers um, after Jesus' ascension, as the early church moved over decades, um, you can imagine a scenario where people would say things like, oh, yeah, wasn't Jesus just a, a great guy, a good teacher, um, a, a great example? And those disciples would be, no, we saw him on the mountain with Moses and Elijah. Heaven invaded earth and the father declared that he was the much loved son who we should obey. Um, and, and, and if you've been following the Moravian texts, um, you'll have seen that some people thought Jesus was Elijah. Some thought he was the prophet Moses. Well, Jesus is demonstrating he, he couldn't have been any of those because they appeared with him. Interestingly, with both Moses and Elijah, neither of them tasted death. They were taken up into heaven. That's why the rumours around them returning to earth were part of this community. Both Moses and Elijah encountered um, Yahweh on a mountain. 1 Kings 19, Mo, um, Elijah on Mount Horeb, Moses on Mount Sinai. And yet this experience was unique. They, they all experienced uh, Yahweh in the cloud, the Shekinah glory. But the words spoken over Jesus were unique. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. We see the supremacy, the greatness of Jesus above all others in this passage. Um, it, uh, it starts with um, the Jesus telling some of the disciples they won't taste death be before they see the kingdom come with power. And that is often debated what that verse means. Um, I think some of the disciples would have thought it meant the return of Jesus. But um, I understand it as the death and resurrection of Jesus because they feared that they would um, die in those days, such was the tension. But really, the whole thrust of the passage for me is about an encounter with Jesus. This is the second of Jesus's metamorphoses. That, that's what the Greek word that we get transfigured come, uh, comes from, the word metamorphosis. The first of his transfigurations, his metamorphosis, is his incarnation. He's transformed from his heavenly body to his earthly body when, when he comes to earth. The second is this on the mountain where he becomes radiant light, pure light. We get a glimpse of his true nature. The third metamorphosis is, is resurrection and he's transformed into a resurrection body. And the fourth metamorphosis will be when he returns to earth for his bride, um, like the rider on the horse, um, transformed at his perusia, his appearing. And so I really want to challenge us today to press in for a encounter with Jesus. Um, yes, we know him, but when was the last time you had that visceral, um, experiential encounter that impacted your life, when it was like Jesus it was like his presence just invaded your room. My experience has been that doesn't just happen. Sometimes it just happens. 
But usually for me, it's when I've set aside that time, when I've pressed in, when I've when I've given that extra time, when I've soaked in his presence, where I've pursued his presence, where I've hungered for his presence. Often it's been because I've been desperate and I've been in a place of tears. And as I've waited on him and worshipped him and, and saw his face, I've encountered him in a greater way. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful if we were able to do that today through this week to press into the presence of Jesus? For Peter, James and John, it says that um, verse eight, uh, verse nine, that a moment happened where there was no one there other than Jesus. Because Jesus is all that we need, the only one we need. And there will be times where there feels like there's no one else with us, but we have Jesus. So press into his presence this day.